for the September 28th, 2015 City uh, Raymore City Council meeting. Ms. Horner, would you all roll firm form? Councilmember Abdelgawad. Here. Councilmember Barber. Present. Councilmember Burke. Present. Councilmember Holman. Present. Councilmember Hubach. Present. Councilmember Kellogg. Present. Councilmember Moorhead. Present. Councilmember Stevens. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff. Present. We do have a quorum. Everybody, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have no presentation and awards, personal appearances, so we'll move right on to staff reports. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would ask that Ms. Warner uh, make a report about the MML Westgate Conference and minutes from the consent agenda. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the first item is to advise you that there is a correction to the agenda that has been redistributed to you tonight. Um, the consent agenda listed tonight's meeting minutes, and I'm not that good. So they are from <laughs> September the 14th uh, for your approval. The second one, as Chief said, is the announcement of the Missouri Municipal League's Westgate Division meeting. It, that will be on October the 15th in Independence, Missouri. And if you plan to attend, please let the city clerk's office know no later than October the 7th so we can get registration completed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warner. I would ask that Mr. Crass make the regular report for Public Works. Thanks, Chief. Um, I've submitted to Council my written report and just wanted to give you an update on uh, several, several of our capital improvement projects. The uh, sidewalk projects started this week. They are working on Overlook and Buena Vista area. Uh, the Johnson Water Main project wrapped up today. Uh, we anticipate the uh, reconstruction project starting in a couple of weeks they are waiting for the fabrication from or for some stormwater boxes uh, street press is done uh, they completed the striping of Lucy Webb Road and uh, Hubach Hill North Cass Parkway last week uh, we did receive an inquiry about a uh, pavement failure on Metfield uh, that work is we are working with the contractor to get that additional patching scheduled and the curb project is wrapping up and that concludes my report Thank you, Mr. Crass. Since Mr. Mustine got a free pass last time, I would ask Mr. Mustine to come up and make a report for Parks and Rec. Thank you very much. Thought I was gonna get away with it and <laughs> I was wrong. So as you guys know, I was hit gone a couple weeks ago. So just some quick highlights of what we've been up to. Uh, we wrapped up the festival in the park, our, our portion of it, obviously the festival in the park incorporated, the volunteers did a fantastic job. It, Everything seemed to go very well. It was well attended, and uh, but so far the the reports coming back was that it was profitable as well. So uh, congratulations and good work to all those folks. Our tennis and basketball court uh, resurfacing project really begins tomorrow. We kind of did some um, preliminary work, but now that the tennis season has officially closed, uh, Memorial Park and the basketball court will will begin tomorrow but we did have some girls make districts so we are still working with the uh, school district to work around practices and and make sure that that works out so they have somewhere to practice doesn't seem to be um, as far as talking with the contractors much of a delay it's just a coordination uh, let's see we are preparing for the harvest night on October 23rd so we're recruiting volunteers some of you may have seen that on Facebook we're looking for some uh, some folks to come out and, and help us do the scary portion out in the woods so we're looking for some actors that want to get out there and and uh, mess with some people while they're on their hike the uh, farmers market is wrapping up we just got a couple weeks left and uh, it's been well attended it's been a good market this year we've had good compliments good comments on it so uh, you only got a couple weeks left so get out there and make sure you you uh, visit those folks uh, this week we'll be doing the native plantings at the depot station we have those purchased and ready to go so we'll probably get those in the ground by the end of the week and uh, lastly I just want to say thank you for allowing me and my staff to go to the NRPA conference I know that that is a privilege and uh, we don't take it lightly and we appreciate the, the fact that you guys invest in us so we appreciate that so I'll answer any questions thank you thanks Nathan 
Um, I would love to call on Mr. Fearborn for the next report, but he's not here. <laughs> um, Mr. Fearborn wanted me to pass along um, the work session next Monday night, October the 5th, will include Operation Greenlight, the use tax, the painting of the water tower, and the joint meeting that you all will be having with Parks and Recreation. And if there are any add-ons uh, that you'd like to see on that agenda for next Monday night, um, please just let us know and we'll make sure that they get it out, added onto that agenda. Um, obviously, Meredith is gone um, to ICMA as well. Um, so if uh, you have in your packet um, some information about the Arts Commission report, um, she will be available to answer any questions that you might have about that report um, come next Monday night as well. Um, and then lastly, I know Nathan touched on the festival in the park, and, and as you know, the last several years, um, we have included the Community Against Crime event uh, at the same time that we uh, conduct the festival, uh, that we partner with them. And so I just would like to take this opportunity to give uh, a couple of thank yous to um, agencies in the area that uh, uh, were such a big help during that event. Uh, first, a big thanks to the Public Works Department uh, with the barricades and the parade. Um, it was such a, a big help getting those streets closed off uh, so that the officers can conduct that parade. Um, the Lee Summit Underwater Rescue, uh, Missouri Search and Rescue Dogs, uh, Missouri Highway Patrol had the seatbelt machines there, uh, Kansas City, Missouri um, PD Bomb and Arson Drug Unit. Uh, there was a helicopter flyover if any of you all were out there, and I think that that was a huge hit with the people who were in the park at the time uh, that that happened. Uh, Cass County Sheriff's mobile command post and the DARE vehicle, um, ATF, had their mobile command post out as well. Um, and then, of course, um, I don't want to forget Raymore Emergency Management, all of our CERT volunteers uh, that were there, Animal Control and the Police Department, um, that were all there for the Community Against Crime. So it was a huge success, I think. Um, you know, partnering with the, uh, the festival has been very successful for us for the last couple of years. And so uh, I'd like to thank all of those folks. Uh, and then in conjunction with that, I don't know if it was good timing or bad timing, uh, the National Drug Take Back was also on Saturday. So we were conducting that at the same time that uh, the Community Against Crime uh, event happened. Uh, and we took in about 300 pounds of unwanted um, prescription mm -hmm. drugs uh, during the take back. And we've already turned those over to the DEA. So they are no longer on the premises, which is a good thing. But uh, <laughs> um, it, it's always such a, a benefit to the community for us to be able to turn those drugs over um, and get those, um, you know, not flushed down toilets and not disposed of improperly. So that's all I have. Kevin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm curious, that huge amount, you know, and it's good, you know, because you're right, it's not going down the, the water treatment. Uh, 300 pounds just for Raymore? Yes, yeah, those are Raymore residents. Incredible and very well done. Well, well, very good program. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Chief, and thank you all your staff that worked on that. Thank you. There are no committee reports, so I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda, including items A, City Council minutes for September 14th, 2015, and B, Resolution 15-40 for disposal of surplus property. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Move on to unfinished business. Oh, so we have the uh, second reading of Bill 3102. The second reading of Bill 3102 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Title I, Chapter 130, Municipal Court, Section 130.240, Failure to Appear of the Raymore City Code. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3102 for the amending of the City Code Section 130.240 regarding failure to appear. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 3102. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 3103 by title only. The second reading of Bill 3103 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Title I, Chapter 130, Municipal Court, Section 130.290, Court Costs of the Raymore City Code. I want to entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3103, amending City Code, Section 130.290, regarding court costs. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3103. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. 
move on to new business. We have the first reading of Bill 3105. The first reading of Bill 3105 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymer, Missouri, amending Title III Traffic Code, Section 300.020 Definitions, to include definitions of golf carts and low-speed vehicles for the operation of such vehicles on public streets located in the City of Raymore. I'll entertain a motion. Actually, I'm sorry, yes. nope. I'm corrected. Mm -hmm. I read the incorrect title. It would be the first reading of Bill 3104. Is that correct? Actually, 3105 should be first. 3105. Yeah. yeah, they're out of order. Okay. In ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Title Three. I have. My apologies. The first reading of Bill 3105 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, adding Chapter 341, Operation of Golf Carts and Low Speed Vehicles on Public Streets, to Title III Traffic Code in order to permit and regulate the operation of golf carts and low speed vehicles defined as neighborhood vehicles on public streets located in the City of Raymore. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I move that we approve Bill 3105, amending Title III Traffic Code, adding City Code Chapter 341, Neighborhood Vehicles on Public Streets. Second. There is a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 3105. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I could, I uh, wanted to uh, have some information. Uh, low speed vehicles, does that also, and maybe this is for the Chief, um, does that include ATVs and if so do they need helmets or it does not include ATVs there's a separate section in the code uh, about ATVs uh, and those are only permitted uh, for official government use um, police department par public works those sorts of things so no it does not include them when we describe um, other low-speed vehicles that are not golf carts and I'm trying to think what other examples. Um, I guess maybe John Deere tractors with a flatbed in the back, or not tractors, but the like gators. What what other vehicles would be constituted as low speed that are not golf carts? Actually, um, because of the popularity of those types of vehicles, um, there are vehicles that are manufactured specifically to operate as low speed vehicles that are not recreational in nature, such as as for golf courses. And in the definition section, and, and, and I will say, um, the reason that these are out of order, um, 3105 is first and 3104 is second, uh, is because we felt like the, the bulk of the conversation about this topic uh, would happen with the regulations and the requirements uh, for operation on the street, uh, and the, the definitions would be secondary. But uh, in the definitions, um, low-speed vehicle and golf cart, um, Neighborhood vehicles encompasses both, and it's it's primarily uh, has to do with the uh, um, number of miles per hour that those vehicles can go. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Stevens. Uh, another uh, question for the chief. I, I assume these vehicles will operate under the same rules as other cars on the road. So if they're not willing wearing their seat belts, they could be taken. Yes, sir, and 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 I will say that. Uh, um, you know, in response to uh, a request by um, a couple of council members, um, we looked at um, um, a number of uh, jurisdictions uh, all over the metropolitan area. We surveyed um, the ones that we ordinarily survey for, uh, um, you know, different types of, of things that we're looking at here in Raymore, um, and only found a couple um, of cities that actually have ordinances that uh, uh, cover the operation of low-speed vehicles or neighborhood vehicles. Um, but you, you will notice in the ordinance that we're proposing that there is a lot of attention paid to the safety aspect of, of this. And, and yes, to the point of your question, um, um, safety belts, um, we also have a prohibition uh, in the proposed ordinance for uh, allowing more passengers than the number of seats provided, um, headlights and taillights, um, um, you know, all, all sorts of um, um, additions to this ordinance that uh, are focused on safety primarily. So, yes, sir. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One question that I have, and I've, I've read through this two times. <laughs> um, 
And I, I seen where it's prohibited for anyone under 16 to ride along in one of these unless under the, with a guardian, legal guardian. What, and I, I can't remember and I, I don't recall seeing, what is the youngest age that could operate one of these on their own? I, I know that uh, it's required to have a driver's license. Yes, sir. What, what are the requirements, age requirements, to operate one of these here on the street with the, the ordinance that we're looking at now? Well, at, as you indicated, the, that section of the proposed ordinance, um, what we were trying to avoid is, you know, uh, a lot of underage um, individuals, you know, on the vehicle, and, and so no, no one under the age of 16 uh, will operate the vehicle and no one under the age um, of 16 is allowed to ride on the vehicle unless the person who's operating the vehicle is their parent or guardian. So they're not even allowed to ride if they're under the age of 16 unless it's their parent or guardian. Sonia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Chief Zimmerman, I had a question about insurance. I noticed that item F on page 79 of our packet says every operator um, shall maintain financial responsibility. Does that say that they have to have insurance? How does insurance work in, in the case of an accident? Um, yes, that's uh, um, actually part of the revised Missouri state statutes um, that requires financial responsibility or insurance. Um, so if they, those individuals operating a uh, low-speed vehicle were to be involved in a vehicular accident, um, my assumption is, based on the state statute, that that would operate exactly the same as if it were two cars involved. Is that a kind of insurance that someone would normally carry on something like that, just to, like to use on the golf course, or is that a different kind of insurance to drive it on the streets? Do you know? Um, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, I believe that um, the way that the, the statute um, is phrased, that, that it is similar to other types of motor vehicle insurance um, if you're operating on a, on a street. So, um, you know, there's different types of insurance, obviously, for um, motorcycles and, and that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I think that because, as I mentioned before, these vehicles are becoming more and more popular, um, that, you know, there may be a whole class of insurance, you know, by itself, but I'm certainly happy to check. One more to kind of follow up. They have to get a permit. So yes. do they have to show that they have insurance to get their permit? Yes. Yes, thank you. Mr. Barber? If I may, I could answer the insurance question. I did check on that, and you're exactly right. They do have a, you do have a separate policy. You can operate these on your own property, and it is covered by your homeowners. But if you operate it on any property that you don't own, you would need a separate policy. And uh, they, you can do a liability, or you can do as much as a full coverage with it. And they do write those policies. I check. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, you know, for me, I'm I'm ex I'm very supportive of this. Every day, I tend to drive down 58, and I'll stop by McDonald's, and there's a gentleman that drives his golf cart over there with his dog, and. Um, you know, one of the things that resonated with me about this is we're really just putting in place operating a motor vehicle. I mean, the fact that we designate it low speed, you know, it's got to have a lot of the same safety features, especially, you know, everything from the headlights, the turn signals, um, seat belts, insurance, uh, registration with the city. I mean, I mean we've, it, it really is, and a driver's license. Um, but I really see a benefit to this um, because, you know, I'm seeing uh, some of our seniors that would like to be able to get around town and need that alternative and maybe don't feel comfortable getting into a large vehicle and driving around. And this gives them some opportunity to kind of get around some of the areas in town. So I, I and, you know, last week we talked about the city of all ages and transportation was a part of that. And this is really kind of a component of that. And. So I think we're taking a positive step here, so I'm very supportive. And Mr. Mayor, if I may, mm -hmm. um, th this is similar to the charitable donation ordinance with respect to this is an activity that's occurring in our city and, and the fact that we can make it safer and we can regulate it um, was really the focus of, of what we were trying to achieve with this proposed ordinance. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to say that I also in support of this, but I was also glad to see as I read it that there were stipulations and regulations to 
not just put this in effect and then tomorrow people go do what they were doing already, but to have the safety requirements and, and really put in place. Um, there's obviously been some thought to this, not just let people, you know, drive around and, and have, you know, fun that maybe wasn't appropriate before and certainly wouldn't be appropriate with this. Um, but I, I did appreciate the, the attention to detail and I think that's got a lot of good thought behind it. So, yeah. Thanks, sorry. Another question. Um, just an estimate. Do you have an estimate of how much time this might take for our police force to monitor, patrol? Is this going to be a lot of maintenance? Maintenance probably isn't the right word, but a lot of time taken for them to work on regulating this. How much of it's going to fall on them? Actually, selfishly, and, and I worked very closely with Ms. Warner on this, um, when we um, looked at the Parkville ordinance, um, and, and you will see, um, as we indicated in the staff report, um, that uh, of all the cities that we looked at, we, we kind of you know, took things from, from different cities that we thought were appropriate safety measures and, and those sorts of things. Uh, the Parkville ordinance, um, uh, which is the, the bulk of what we looked at because it's one of the only cities around that actually does this, um, the city clerk is responsible for issuance of the permits and, um, and those sorts of things. So I, I put a lot of work on this, Warner, um, because uh, we wrote this together. And uh, so, so actually, yeah, um, the, the police department, and because you'll notice um, in the proposed ordinance as well that um, uh, we are not doing the inspections either. So, um, you know, this is going to be, and we spoke with the state of Missouri, um, the Highway Patrol, to talk about who would do these inspections and, and, and what that would look like um, ultimately if this were passed. Um, and so that's not the police department either. So really, you know, what we felt like, because we would be the enforcement uh, part of, of this proposed ordinance, that uh, it really was better for us to separate ourselves from the inspection and then the enforcement, um, and, and we would just be enforcing the ordinance um, if we saw folks in violation uh, of it, like riding on sidewalks and things like that, um, which, which is prohibited with this proposed ordinance. So um, actually, it's, it's going to be a much smaller responsibility for the police department than, than some others, per se. Jay. Thank you, sir. Um, first, I want to say kudos to the chief and staff for uh, the ordinances developed. Um, if you compare it to uh, Parkville's, which is probably the standard around here, uh, ours is better. You really did a top-notch job on this, and I think it's very clear that the chief's in-depth knowledge of this subject knows no bounds. I've been very impressed with how you've handled this. I know she spent a lot of time researching it, talking to her colleagues. Um, I was uh, one of the big pushes behind this, as was Kevin. This was uh, initially driven out of uh, a neighborhood from uh, our ward as uh, more of a convenience amenity, and there will certainly be people that will take advantage of that. However, I feel this has uh, a real possibility for future implications of traffic patterns, transportation of our citizens, and uh, as, as uh, uh, Mr. Moorhead, I'm sorry, I'm really chewing on my tongue, uh, mentioned, uh, you know, our, our efforts in, in providing uh, opportunities for uh, the community of all ages. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is I've been in some form of traffic safety, uh, traffic safety profession all my life. And um, as you know, it was some years ago that the state of Missouri uh, adopted a graduated driver's license. When most of us got our driver's license, you got it at 16 and they released you to the world. Nowadays, you get your permit at 15, you drive with your parents. At 16, you have limited privileges, which they don't turn you loose until you're 18 now. Um, one of the things that I have uh, dreaded and I've preached about for two decades is the uh, aging population of, of our nation and uh, how do we take the keys away from mom or dad? I dread the day that I have to do that with my mother and then I think about what will happen to cause my son to take the keys away from me? What if, just a what if, we had a degraduated license as a person's physical facility started to leave them the more serious scenario was that them driving at 70 miles per hour, 65, 70 miles per hour on highway speeds, high highway speeds. But if we could start degraduating them into lower speed vehicles where they could still get to the neighborhood doctor, where they could still get to the neighborhood grocery store, they could still go to McDonald's or their favorite coffee shop in the morning, this might be an answer to that problem or at least a partial answer. So I really think this has implications beyond just the uh, amenity convenience and of Needless to say, I'm in support of it. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know that I could say anything that hadn't been said. Uh, I appreciate your hard work on this, and I know we came to you and, and said, what do you think? And you gave us your opinion, and you put a, a great ordinance together, and Jeannie, thank you, too. Um, you know, I envision all those things that were said, and even maybe a step further, as, as our city grows with an ordinance like this, when a developer comes in, maybe they'll take a look at adding that to the development. Is that something that we have a place for them, not just with the other vehicles and bicycles, but actually you know, expanding the development to include a low speed vehicle lane or path. I've been in other communities that ha have those and uh, they certainly are not just used by the elderly and they're used by all people. Um, you know, uh, gas is $1.99 so nobody's thinking about uh, saving gas right now, but there'll become a time when we're back in that mode. And so uh, it's nice to get an ordinance, get it on the books. Uh, and work with it and see how it goes. And I do appreciate everybody's uh, hard work on it and I do support it. Thank you. There is a motion and a second. There's no further discussion. All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Nope. Opposed? Okay, seven in favor, one opposed. Thank you for the catch. We have the first reading of Bill 3104 by title only. The first reading of Bill 3104 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending Title III Traffic Code, Section 300.020 definitions to include definitions of golf carts and low-speed vehicles for the operation of such vehicles on public streets located in the City of Raymore. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, sir. Since I uh, did the last one, I might as well do this one as well. And Jeannie, I'm having as much trouble as you did. <laughs> Sir, I move that we uh, approve Bill 3104, which is amending Title III, Traffic Code, City Code Section 300 definitions. I second it. We have a motion and a second to approve Bill 3104. Is there any discussion? Kevin? Yes, I have a question on this. How do we quantify or, or know that uh, it says here low speed vehicle or LSV means a four wheeled vehicle capable of a top speed greater than 20 miles per hour but not greater than 25 miles per hour. That's, that, that is my question. How do we know that it won't go fa faster than 25 miles per hour? And sir, these definitions were taken directly out of the Missouri State Statute but I, I would assume um, when those vehicles are manufactured that there there are governors on those vehicles that don't allow them to operate any faster than those speeds but uh, um, those definitions were taken directly out of the statute yeah and and I appreciate that I, I, I appreciate all the staff's work on this I it's very well thought out and my, my opposition to this has no bearing on on what I think staff has done I think you've done a stellar job uh, I just have some concerns you know uh, with YouTube and, and all these other things that we can just Google search anything and, and see that somebody has went out and bought a low speed vehicle and, and modified it with a Hayabusa engine that it will sit there and burn tires off for three weeks straight. And it was reached speeds of over 120 miles an hour. That's what my concern is. Um, I, it may be, you know, I'll probably catch some, uh, some barbs here for, uh, think in the worst case scenario, but um, it, it, it concerns me, you know. I mean, where, wherever you have four wheels, you know, and I'm a guy. I, I'm, I'm well over the hot rod <laughs> for time of my life. I still have my hot rod, but uh, I don't go out and burn tires off. But at one time, you know, many like me would have wanted to go out and buy a small vehicle and put that motorcycle engine in it to make it go 100 miles an hour. So, you know, I, what, what, what is the uh, scenario there if, if that is the case? I mean, that's why I asked the question, no more than 25 miles an hour. How do we regulate that? How do we enforce that? And in, in the proposed ordinance in Bill 3105, there's actually a section in that proposed ordinance that if the vehicle has been modified in any way over the manufacturer's standards, then the registration is voided.
Go ahead. Just uh, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Chief, I was thinking probably uh, people out there that have ATVs, I asked a question about it earlier. I'm sitting here thinking, well, maybe they, I don't know how fast they go because I've not had one. So I'm assuming they go over 25 and that's why it wasn't really even a valid question to be considered. Uh, do, do they go, how fast do they go? 50, 60. All right, well then yeah, see, no, obviously very, that was a question. Fast. Obviously that's why it wasn't uh, needed to be considered because I didn't realize how fast they were. So point of clarification for my stupidity. Um, Mr. Mayor, if I may respond, I, I know I, there were protocols to address the, the chair, but I, I, I want to address uh, Mr. Burke. And I, I totally agree that an ATV, you know, opposed to a low speed vehicle, they have suspensions on them that are just that of a, like a motorcycle and that of what we think of the, the four wheelers and, that, and they are extremely fast. I've seen them of upwards 70, 80 miles per hour. You know, they, they race these things on sand dunes out in the desert and uh, they, they have no lack for speed. And, you know, the, the ordinance, I, I read through that thinking that too also, because I, I've seen many of the gators. I've seen what they call razors and stuff like that. Honda puts one out, Yamaha, Sea uh, Doop very, very high performance machines and those are completely inappropriate for street use and the manufacturer even states that on the uh, on the purchase bill and that is that it's basically strictly for off-road use. Uh, it, it, they are not safe on, on the streets at all because of the uh, the speed, the high center of gravity and all of the tires, everything is just not appropriate. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor, Please. I want to say that I'm in favor of these, and I appreciate the fact that it is the police department that is bringing it forward because you will be the ones that will ultimately ha make a lot of decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 7-1. Yeah, the first reading, uh, or maybe we have the reading of Resolution 1543 by title only. The reading of Resolution 15-43 by title only. A resolution of the City of Raymore, Missouri confirming the decision to install sidewalk on certain identified undeveloped lots and authorizing city staff to take the steps necessary to have the sidewalk installed. Thank you. Staff report? Uh, I would ask Mr. Cataret to give a report. Thank you. Uh, back at your uh, September 14th uh, council meeting, uh, council held 16 public hearings on uh, those undeveloped lots where the uh, property owner did not install the sidewalk on the lot by the uh, established August 1st uh, deadline. Uh, council voted to include 14 of those 16 lots uh, on the list for the city to install sidewalk. Uh, so resolution 15-43 before you this evening would confirm the 14 lots that the uh, city's to install sidewalk on. Uh, and if that resolution is approved, uh, staff would follow the same process we did last year. We'll notify the property owner that the city um, will commence installation of the sidewalk no sooner than April 1st of 2016. What that in essence does is give the property owner the opportunity to either secure a building permit or install the sidewalk by that April 1st deadline. Um, and uh, that at some point after that, the uh, city would go upon the property to install the sidewalk and then levy a special assessment. Again, following the same process that we did this year. Uh, so staff does recommend approval of resolution 15-43. Questions of staff, Kevin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This will probably be an opinion question, uh, but with the economies of scales when we have this many properties and we hire a contractor to do that, would our cost, would the city's cost, I say, would the city's cost be likely less than that of an individual homeowner to have one installed? Uh, I'll ask that and then a follow-up question after that. I can say with certainty that that was the case this year, but the economy of scale, we installed, you know, roughly 60 lots this year. So it was cheaper for a property owner to have the city install it this year than to do it themselves. And I, and I know that because we had several property owners follow that protocol, mm -hmm. allowed us to install it, then they reimbursed us. Uh, next year, we're only doing 14 sidewalk segments and they're scattered in the city, not likely to be 
economies of scale when you're only doing that limited number of sidewalk segments. Okay, my follow-up question is, in the case that possibly it is, is that related to the uh, homeowners when they do call, if they do call, that, you know, that they get, be given the opportunity to, to have one installed on their own and compare prices and that? Would we have any idea at, at that, at, as it comes closer to that date to where we can give them an idea that it, if it would be cheaper for them to be levied rather than to hire a contractor? Uh, we would share that information with the homeowner if they called in. Of course, we'll be going through the bidding process in early winter, and I'll have those, uh, the contract numbers in hand before the April 1st deadline, and that's exactly what happened this year is individuals that uh, wanted to see what price we got compared to what they could get, and that's when they made their decision prior to the April 1st deadline. I mean, we don't want to be in the business of installing sidewalk. It's just the nature of the process that we follow. It's public information. I got a public bid. I share that information, and they make that determination. Uh, but I can't tell you the ones that um, where we did step in and, and install. They have reimbursed the city uh, when they when they checked on the pricing. So uh, at least we have gotten paid for those. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution. 15-43 for the confirmation of undeveloped lots to have sidewalks installed by the city. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution 1543. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. May we have the reading, or first reading of Bill 3106 by title only. The first reading of Bill 3106 by title only an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Orr Wyatt Streetscapes for the Ryan's Access Project, City Project Number 15-228-201, in the amount of $54,381.50, and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Staff report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask Mr. Crass to make a report. Thanks, Chief. <coughs> Thanks, Chief. Uh, <coughs> This project involves the construction of a driveway in the northeast corner of the Ryan's parking lot. <clears throat> the project was bid with two alternates uh, for the driveway, one being uh, to construct the driveway out of asphalt, the second out of concrete. Uh, the, bud the bids are summarized in the staff report. Staff's recommending the use of concrete for this project. It is slightly higher than the uh, low asphalt alternative, but there are some savings associated with the long-term maintenance cost and uh, in this application, with you know, we anticipate trucks and a lot of turning movements, just like we have concrete out in the parking lot here. Uh, we felt that this was a uh, concrete was a better application for this project. So we do recommend award of the contract to Or Wyatt Streetscapes for the concrete option. Questions to staff? Mr. Stevens. Considering that they can get out on Dean already. What is the use for this road? I, I quite understand why we need another one. Uh, the yeah. access, the access they have is to the to Kentucky. Uh, that intersection will not be signalized. This provides an access to a signalized intersection for the uh, Ryan Ryan's patrons. Well, that's what I mean. There's a little semicircle thing that comes out at Kentucky Fried Chicken where they can already get out at a signalized intersection. That's what my question was. There's already a place they can get out with the signal, so that's, that's why I questioned it. But this provides a direct access to a signalized signalized road. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in addition, the city's intent is to pursue closing of the current access in the future to 58 highway. Is that correct, sir? Uh, yes. This is the first part of a. We will, yes, we will be in the near future approaching Ryan's about making that modification. Thank you. And, and if we, if the only access was off of Kentucky, we would have to force them out onto Kentucky into another city to their traffic intersection a half a block away without this. Is that also correct? That's correct. Thank you. Kevin? I guess I'm going to ask a question into the future. What's the likelihood of, of Ryan's? vacating that cut out onto 58 that that's what concerns me the most i mean i i agree with having a and this is commentary for my colleagues i agree with having a, the access back there 
but I worry that they may not have to give up that curb cut on 58, which is ultimately what we are, are looking for. What's, I, I guess, what's staff's opinion or do you have any, any inclination or idea that, that they would be willing to uh, give up that access on 58? Well, it, our, our hopes is that we can show them because we've done some initial traffic counts that access is very, very used very little, uh, if at all, during their, their peak times. Uh, I think with the proximity to the traffic signal, there are a number of safety, <coughs> safety issues that we can uh, share with them for the need to close that access. And Mr. Mayor, if I may, mm -hmm. um, to Mr. Crass's point, we have a number of vehicular accidents there, you know, people trying to access um, out onto 58 from that parking lot. Um, so the police department does respond there fairly frequently. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the other question also um, is this really um, most beneficial for their delivery trucks as well as um, so I, I, I was thinking about this and okay you know we, we a lot of us are going to consider it from the point of, of a customer but they probably have a delivery truck maybe every day to replenish their food stocks is then this would certainly be big enough and easy enough for their trucks to to leave and then wait at a light rather than try to meander around and deal with that Kentucky uh, to 58 and if you're trying to make a left turn that's a nightmare is that's that, correct that's that's correct okay thank you Sonia thank you mr. mayor and isn't the long-term plan to reroute that intersection at, at Kentucky and 58 anyway? Eventually, we're not going to have an intersection at Kentucky and 58 that that traffic is going to be rerouted around so that it all is all at signalized um, intersections because of the safety. I mean, that's just not a safe place for people to be pulling right out without the signal. I think that intersection will always remain. I think there will be some modifications to the turning movements at that intersection. We are in some initial discussions with Belton regarding that, but I think that there will be some restricted access, so then that the two, two access points that will have full access are the current, current signal and then the, the other signal at Clinton Dean. Okay, there is a motion and a second to approve Bill 3106. Actually, Mr. Mayor, I don't believe there was. Okay. Uh, but I would move to approve Bill 3106 to award a contract for the Ryan's access modification. Second. Okay, now there's a motion and a second. If there's any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Two in opposition, five in a favor. It's, uh, it's approved. We have uh, first reading of Bill 3107 by title only, please. The first reading of Bill 3107 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract to purchase land from Cumberland Properties, Inc. in the amount of $389,727.20. Staff report. I'd ask Mr. Cataret to give a report. Thank you. Uh, the City Council has reserved uh, $1.5 million in the uh, City's uh, Restricted Revenue Fund for use in the construction of a uh, City Hall uh, annex building. Uh, this reserve includes funding for the purchase of land uh, upon which the building and other possible future amenities uh, can be located. Uh, upon direction of City Council, staff did negotiate with Glenn Jones, who is uh, uh, the owner of Cumberland Properties Incorporated uh, for the purchase of lots 5, 8, and 9 in the Raymore Municipal Complex. Uh, these three lots uh, are located at the south end of, of Municipal Circle, just to the south of the City Hall building here. Uh, a purchase price of uh, $2.69 per square foot was agreed upon. Uh, then with the combined land area of 144,880 square feet, the total purchase price is $389,000. $727.20. Uh, city staff request approval of Bill 3107 for the vacant land real estate sale contract. Questions of staff? Thank you. 
All right, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3107 for the con for a contract for real estate purchase. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carry up. Uh, opposed? One in opposition, the rest in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. That takes care of new business. We'll move on to public comments. Anybody in the public wishing to make a comment, please come forward. Identify yourself for the record and keep your comments to under five minutes. Seeing no one, I'll close the public comments and move on to Mayor Council communication. This, this evening, um, beginning with Councilmember Kellogg. No comment tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Hubach. No comment. Councilmember Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to make a few comments about Festival in the Park. Uh, it was great seeing a lot of uh, friends and neighbors out using our park facilities and entertaining themselves and bringing the families together. It was a real good time. And I just want to, a real good friend of mine that I respect very dearly made a comment to me. He shook my hand and he said, what a great place we live in. And I have to agree. I mean, just seeing everybody get along and having a good time. It was, it was, it was a nice time. Hope everybody got a chance to see it. And I also wanted to uh, kind of keep that theme of a great place to live and uh, thank everybody with their hard work with the low speed vehicle ordinance. I think it's going to help our citizens today. I, hope, I think it's going to help attract some new new people and um, uh, I'm excited about it. Thank you. Councilmember Holman. Thank you, sir. A couple things. Uh, one, I'd like to uh, say welcome and thanks to the Boy Scouts for being in attendance tonight. It's always just nice to see uh, special groups, whether they be Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Uh, occasionally we have the high school students here. So thank you for attending. It's good to see you in the audience. Uh, secondly, again, I would like to extend, uh, concur with Council Member Barber's comments and um, thank the City Council for their wisdom in passing that ordinance. I would agree with everything that he said. I think this is something that's good for us in the short, immediate term and long term future of the city. Um, congratulations to staff. Uh, you sailed the ship without the captain tonight. Fantastic job. <laughs> One point of order, Mr. Cataret, you were in the wrong chair. No points taken off. Um, you handled it like pros. Great job. Outstanding work. And uh, just so that I do not get chastised from my teachers of Mr. Willerth and Mr. Cataret, uh, the, uh, the piece of business where we talked about the Ryan's access. I've got to speak a little bit about that. Uh, that was a sore, sore point with us. Of course, that was an early business to go in before we had all the development around there and the traffic congestion that we did. We allowed an entrance off of 58, which you know quickly became a, a traffic issue for us. As the chief has stated, we have uh, problems there, especially when traffic queues up. People like to use it as a cut through, and I worry about issues in the parking lot. I don't think we've had any. Um, we also have to remember that the intended future engineer of that intersection and and the signalized intersection as, as Sonia mentioned the, the uh, uh, road is going to go around so access main access from the Raymore side is going to come from that new entrance that's where our people are going to go in and out as well as the trucks that, that Joe mentioned uh, that's going to be the safest and most convenient for employees and customers to go in and out of there um, and hopefully MoDOT will see the wisdom of, of uh, cutting off that access of 58 and Ryan's will agree and we'll get that closed and, and make that a, a safer location for all of our uh, motoring public. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Councilmember Burke. Uh, I wanted to say I enjoyed uh, the weekend's festivities, uh, walked in the parade with the scouts and uh, did a little traffic control um, of our handicap access at, at night. and. As I was getting ready to go up there, I'm like, "Do we need to bring flashlights? Is there a, is there a street light there?" Where and there was, but we had our, we were we were prepared anyway, um, as we should be as scouts. But I um, wanted to thank the scouts that came up to talk to me tonight. I've had about ten so far visit, and just kind of goes out to any any scouts or you know any groups that need to interview somebody. Um, you can certainly interview any of the people up here. Or, or you can come to me. I'm always uh, available to help people uh, learn more about their citizenship and their community, and that's what they were up here doing. So thank you to them. Councilmember Moorhead. Um, I also had a wonderful time at the festival on each of the days. I was glad to see a lot of people out enjoying that. <clears throat> I want to uh, thank the residents that came out two Wednesdays ago from Ward 2 for our town hall meeting here. It was uh, 
wonderful opportunity. I want to commend Councilmember Burke uh, for his contribution as well. We both had a great time interacting with everybody and just kind of sharing information about the city. Um, Councilmember Hubach and I last week attended the Missouri Municipal League Annual Conference, uh, which I, I have to put into context a great deal of walking and she was a trooper um, she did a great job we had a good time together and uh, got to meet a lot of people and and interact it was surprising the number of vendors uh, that interact with the city so that was a very good conference attended and I appreciated attending with her um, the only thing I will end with is um, uh, toward my fellow council member Holman here who I was going with him perfectly on the low speed vehicles. He almost lost me though, because he made a comment about um, taking away driver's licenses and at one and worrying. I have to say that I hope my kids are not watching this. They would be taking them away now. So I wish you wouldn't have said that. Um, I might not be driving next week, but uh, and and I wore red for the Chiefs. So, Councilmember Abdelgawad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to take a minute and echo the, the kudos, pat on the back for, to city staff for your participation in the festival in the park this weekend. It was fabulous. The Communities Against Crime was, again, a wonderful opportunity for our community to learn about law enforcement and all of the different facets that work together so well to, to keep us all safe in many, many ways. Also, the parade was fabulous, and I know y'all work hard on that as well. Um, big thanks to the Festival in the Park Committee, the citizens from Raymore who actually put on that, that festival. The People are really surprised when, when they hear that it's really not the city who does that festival. It's actually citizens who, who coordinate all that, and I know it's a lot of hard work for them. They work year-round on that festival, so just a shout out to them. We really appreciate what they do. And I just love the way it, it brings the community together. We have volunteer groups, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. Um, some of our in-home businesses get to come out and have their tables in the tents and our local businesses as well and a chance for everybody to get, get out of their houses and their neighborhoods and hang out in the park and get to know each other and just build community. I think it's a, a great <laughs> event and really appreciate all the hard work that goes into that. Councilmember Stevens. No comments tonight, Mr. Mayor. All right. I will echo the uh, kudos of everybody about the festival in the park and make a comment about the weather. I don't know who is in control of the weather, but you did a great job. The uh, new ED. The new ED? Okay. <laughs> and we have reason to enter an executive session to discuss litigation matters as authorized by 610.021 sub 1. We Mr. Mayor, I'll move to enter into executive session for those reasons. Second. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Abdelgawad? Yes. Councilmember Barber? Yes. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Councilmember Holman? Yes. Councilmember Hubach? Yes. Councilmember Kellogg? Yes. Councilmember Moorhead? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Okay, we'll go into executive session. We'll reconvene only to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>